hello everyone so in the last class we discussed about series lcr circuit in which we have calculated the instantaneous current nothing but i m sin omega t plus phi so we derived what is the amplitude of the oscillating current i m so the expression for the amplitude of the oscillating current is v m by root of r square plus x c minus x l whole square and also we did have an expression for what is phi phi is nothing but the phase difference between the applied ac voltage and current so tan phi we got it as x c minus x l by r so using phasor diagram solution and by analytical solution we did have this uh, uh, im and the phase angle and also we discussed uh, different cases what is xc xl those are nothing but the uh, reactants in ac circuits we have capacitive reactors and inductive reactants so we discussed uh, in different cases if xc is greater than xl then the circuit is purely a capacitive circuit a capacitive circuit and if xc is less than xl we said it is purely inductive circuit so how the relation between voltage and current so if this is a capacitive circuit so current is leading current is leading and in case of a inductive circuit where the voltage is leading or current is lagging so current is leading with respect to voltage and whereas here voltage is leading with respect to current so these things we discussed to determine the instantaneous current and uh, determine im and the phase angle and for different cases how the current and phase relations we have seen all these things right now suppose if this capacitive reactants is equals to the inductive reactants that is nothing but resonance that we are going to discuss now when it happens when the capacitive reactance is equals to the inductive reactance in such a case the phenomenon of resonance occurs that we are going to discuss in today's class resonance so this is uh, one of the characteristic of a series lcr circuit that is resonance so in our uh, first year mechanics also we have seen uh, this resonance phenomena so here if you consider a system so each system will oscillate with a certain frequency called natural frequency natural frequency if this system let us say a body if it is driven by a source if it is driven by a external source which is supplying different frequencies if the natural frequency of this body let us say f not is the natural frequency if this is matching with the driving frequency this is a source which is which can able to provide different frequencies if the driving force frequency is matching with the natural frequency of the body then this natural body vibrates with a maximum amplitude that is called resonance so resonance is nothing but if a system is oscillating with this frequency called natural frequency if this natural frequency f not is matching with the some external agent is providing energy whose frequency is given by driving energy whose frequency if matches with the natural frequency then this system or this body vibrates with a maximum amplitude that is called resonance so in our first year physics lab experiments we have sonometer where we have a wire wire uh, with a pulley there are some weights added in it and uh, we have two wooden bridges 
which are fixed. So here we use a tuning fork, right? So this particular length of the wire will have some natural frequency F0. Will have some natural frequency F0. So we'll, they will provide you different tuning forks having different frequencies. So what we will do, we'll keep a paper rider in, in between the wire and we'll take the tuning fork and we'll vibrate and we'll keep it close to the wire. It means that now the body is under forced oscillations, under forced oscillation. Suppose, let us say this is 100 Hz. The natural frequency of the wire is 100 Hz. Let us consider, if I consider 50 Hz and 75 Hz and 100 Hz likewise. So, this, these all are called the driving forces. So, if the natural frequency and the external force frequency, if both are matching the system's natural frequency and that uh, system which is providing the energy, whose now, frequencies, if they are matching, then the body, this wire, will vibrate with a maximum amplitude. Nothing but, if you keep a paper rider in between these bridges, so the paper rider fall off from the wire. Why did it happen? The, uh, because the wire oscillates with a maximum amplitude, due to which the paper rider fall off from the wire. So, this is nothing but the resonance principle. So, the same thing, this is happening. So, the basic principle is the natural frequency, if it matches with the external force frequency, then the natural body oscillates with the maximum amplitude. This is nothing but sonometer experiment. Similarly, let us consider a boy who is uh, swinging on a swing. Let us say a boy is swinging on a swing. So, let us say this swing is having a certain natural frequency S0. So, he is uh, moving back and forth just like a pendulum, right? So, after a certain time, he will come to rest. So, in order to avoid that, in order to continue his uh, uh, oscillations, what he will do? Every time he pulls the rope like this. So, due to which he is exerting force on the rope. So, for every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction. Again, the rope will exert force on us. So, because of which it is uh, making oscillation. So, if the time interval for pulling this rope or the frequency with which this uh, boy is pulling the rope, if it matches with the natural frequency of the swing, so this is the natural frequency of the swing and the boy is pulling the rope with certain friction. So, let us say he was uh, pulling the rope too times in a second or three times in a second that is nothing but the frequency if the uh, external so this is nothing but the driving force frequency if external driving force frequency matches with the natural frequency of the swing then this uh, it is making maximum oscillation so this is a common example for the resonance phenomena so now we will see for the case of a lcr series circuit the resonance phenomena Right. So, we know that uh, in the beginning of the class we said the amplitude of the oscillating current. What is the amplitude of the oscillating current? Which is nothing but I m. Amplitude of the oscillating current I m is equals to V m by square root of R square plus X c minus X l whole square. What is X c? X c is nothing but capacitive reactance. Capacitive reactance in AC, we will say it as a reactance. So, Xc is equals to 1 by omega C. Similarly, Xl is equal is nothing but inductive reactance. Inductive reactance. So, which is equals to Xl is equals to omega L. Suppose, if I am, so we have an AC source which is connected to an inductor and a capacitor and a resistor all are in series. So here if suppose Xc is equals to Xl, Xc is equals to Xl, what happens? So nothing but if you change this, this is nothing but the driving force just like a tuning force. 
So, if we are changing this, varying the frequency, what is this, the alternating voltage? Vn sin omega t. So, by varying this omega, by changing the external energy source, suppose if Xc, make Xc as equals to Xl, that is capacitive reactance is equals to inductive reactance. So, for one particular frequency omega called the resonance frequency omega naught, if omega is equals to omega naught, what happens here? Xc is nothing but 1 by omega naught C, which is equals to omega naught L. If the applied frequency is equals to the omega naught, so at this condition, omega naught square, I can write it as 1 by Lc or implies omega naught, we call it as 1 by square root of Lc. So, here Lc. So, by taking the values of inductance and capacitance, omega naught is the is, uh, is nothing but the natural frequency of the circuit. This is depending on the value of L and depending on the value of C. We have the natural frequency of the circuit. If the natural frequency of the circuit matches with the driving force applied AC voltage, if both are matching, then the current is maximum. Why the current is maximum? We'll see. So here, if Xc is equal to Xm, so I, what will be the oscillating current? The, or the amplitude of the current will become Vm by root of R square plus Xc minus Xl. Both are equal. So they get cancelled. So we will get it as R square plus 0 or Vm by R. Vm by R. So here, at this condition of Xc equal to Xl, the impedance will become minimum because Xc as this term will become 0. So, we can say what is impedance? We will write impedance as Z is nothing but square root of R square plus Xc minus Xl whole square. So, when both are equal, so Z impedance is nothing but simply resistance. So, the impedance is minimum. When the impedance will be minimum? At a condition of an Xc is equal to Xl at which the impedance is minimum. If the impedance is minimum, the current will become maximum. So, this is the maximum. So, the amplitude of the oscillating current is maximum. When it will be maximum? When the natural force frequency. So, see here. When omega, the driving force frequency, if it is varied and if it matches with the natural frequency of the circuit, then the um, impedance in the circuit, that is nothing but uh, resistance is minimum. If resistance is minimum, the current will become maximum. That is, the amplitude of the oscillating current is maximum in the resonance condition. Resonance condition at which Xc is equal to Xl, impedance becomes max minimum and current becomes maximum. So, this is called the importance or the characteristics of the LCR series circuit. Right. So, if now we are going to draw a graph of amplitude of the oscillating current versus the applied AC voltage, frequency of the applied AC voltage. Let us say, this is the applied driving frequencies, nothing but the AC voltage frequencies. So, let us consider the circuit inductance is 1 milli henry. So, milli henry means 10 power of minus 3 henry. And the capacitance of this capacitor, let us say it is 1 nanofarad. Nano means 10 power of minus 9 farads. Right. So, if L and C are like this, then what is the natural frequency or the resonance frequency of the circuit? The resonance frequency of the circuit is given by 1 by square root of Lc, L into C. So, what is the value of L? It is nothing but 10 power minus 3 into 10 power minus 9. So, this will be square root of 10 power minus 12. So, this will by considering uh, 10 power minus 12 square root, this will be 1 power 10 power minus 6. Or we can write it as 10 power 6 
and what is omega omega is nothing but the angular frequency so this is the units is radian per second or we can write it as 1 mega radian per second this is the natural frequency of the circuit so if the external applied force frequency if it matches with the natural force frequency then the current the amplitude of the oscillation of the current will become maximum so observe the circuit here so see here what is this value if omega this is x, uh, x axis is omega if it is 1 mega radian per second let us say this is a 0.5 this is 1 this is 1.5 this is 2 like that so if the applied frequency is equal to the resonance frequency of the circuit then you can observe a maximum current maximum oscillation of the amplitude of the current we can observe similarly so the, let us say this is for one particular circuit r equals to 100 ohms r equals to 100 ohms because the maximum current also depends on the resistance of the circuit right let us say one more graph the same way by considering the same l and c combination but r is 200 ohms so for 200 ohms as r increases the im will become the im decreases so here we will get the graph like this One more time, I'll draw graph. This is for R equal to hundred ohms. black curve indicates r equals to 100 ohms and red curve indicates for higher resistance value let us say r equals to 200 ohms so from the circuit you can observe that if for less value of resistance r equals to 100 ohm 100 ohm the peak is sharp and for 200 ohms the maximum value of current reduced and also the peak is broad it is not sharp it is less sharp so these are the things we, have, we can observe from the graph so for the value of low resistance the, sharp, the peak is very sharp as the resistance value increases not only the peak value of current decreases but it is also getting broader that we are going to discuss in detail right so this is about the resonance uh, in case of a series LCR circuit right so here this LCR series circuit have many applications one of the application is tuning of radio or TV so suppose if you consider a radio which is having an antenna so this antenna antenna receives different uh, signals from the broadcasting radio stations so the radio station sends the signals so the antenna receives different radio station signals these are different signals like uh, uh, radio mechi or kasavani different frequencies are received at this antenna so this is nothing but this is the driving source which is having many frequencies which is having many frequencies so now in order to tune so we have we inside the radio we have a circuit we have a circuit consisting of l c and r right so what is the driving force frequency this is a as applied ac voltage source 
right so by varying this knob in order to tune we will vary the knob so where the c value capacitance of the circuit changes as the capacitance changes what happens to the resonance frequency of the circuit it also changes so omega not changes omega not changes so by changing the value of c we have to see that this resonance frequency must match with one of the frequency of a uh, frequency of the radio signal if this uh, uh, external frequency in the antenna if it matches with the re resonance frequency of the circuit you can hear a particular uh, frequency radio signal with the maximum amplitude that is for that radio signal the current is maximum so if omega not let us say if it is a tuned to 100 hertz if it is having 200 hertz 100 hertz 300 so here for omega 1 is matching with omega not so for this radio station and for this radio signal the amplitude of oscillation of current is maximum so you can able to hear that particular radio signal that is the nothing but tuning of circuits if this takes place in radio as well as in the television similarly one more application of the lcl series circuit is metal detector so in public places or in a shopping malls theaters uh, airports metro stations where we have uh, we have to go through a metal detector so inside this metal so a person is trying to go inside this metal detector so here this metal detector consists of an lcr series circuit and it is set to resonance for one particular frequency correspondingly let us say this was set to resonance for a frequency of 550 hertz and the peak value of current the maximum value of current is let us say one ampere right so what it contains it contains actually a number of turns a coil with a number of turns which are connected to a capacitor nothing but lcr series circuit so here once if the person who is entering if he is uh, uh, carrying a metal like axe or a knife like that or a gun so if it is a metal object so now if this metal object is going into it, into the detector so what happens is a metal nothing but a magnetic material so due to which the inductance l value changes the value of l changes as it is a magnetic field so once if a metal material is play, flowing moving into this part so the value of l inductance value changes if l changes automatically omega not changes initially the frequency the circuit is set to resonance for a frequency of 550 and we will get maximum current as 1 ampere now and whenever this metal object enters into the uh, region automatically the value of as you know inductor in which suppose if a metal magnetic material is placed so the inductance is given by l is equals to mu naught mu r n square a l so it depends on the relative permeability of the medium so once this metal object is moving the inductance changes once inductance changes now the circuit is not uh, set to a resonance actually it is set to resonance for a frequency of 550 now it was changed let us say it changed it to 400 h so for 5, 550 hertz the current is 1 ampere now the resonance condition is gone so the current current in the circuit changes once the current changes there will be alarm triggered showing that there is a change in current why there is a change in current because resonant con resonance condition is not satisfied so correspondingly the current is changed in the circuit once there is a change in the current there will be a sensor giving alarm means that somebody was uh, uh, carrying some objects so uh, in this lc metal detector will use lcr series circuit so these are some of the applications of the lcr series circuit and uh, see here we observe the resonance phenomena in a circuits containing inductance and capacitance and also the resistor because uh, we observe here in case of a in a phasor diagram also we have shown that 
if this is a current and a voltage across resistor and this is the voltage across capacitor and this is voltage across the inductor. So now we have shown that Xc is equals to Xl. If Xc is equals to Xl, correspondingly the voltage across inductor and the voltage across capacitor, they are equal and opposite. They cancel out each other. They can cancel out each other. So for this circuit, the applied AC voltage, if I applied a voltage V, there will be voltage across resistor, voltage across capacitor and voltage across inductor. So if these two are equal and cancel out, so whatever the applied AC voltage is getting dropped across the resistor. Entire voltage is getting dropped across the resistor. So if you have a circuit containing L and C, then only we can able to observe resonance because of which the current will be maximum. So we don't, we cannot able to observe resonance if a circuit consisting of RC or it consists of RL. For these systems, we do not observe resonance phenomena. So this is about the resonance and uh, different applications of the LC, uh, LCR series circuit. Right. Now we are going to see sharpness of resonance. What is sharpness of resonance? Let me see now. We said that the amplitude of the oscillating current as Vm by square root of R square. I am writing Xc minus Xl. Actually, it is Xc minus Xl whole square. A minus B whole square. We can also write this as Vm by R square plus Xl minus Xc whole square. Whatever convenience, A minus B or B minus A both are same. And what is XL and XC? XL is omega L and XC is 1 by omega C. So IM is equals to VM by square root of R square plus omega L minus 1 by omega C whole square. Let us say this is just to be modified XC minus XL as XL minus XC. So at resonance or at resonance that is when the applied frequency is equals to omega naught, what happens? Xc is equals to Xl. So correspondingly, we'll get 1 by omega naught C is equals to 1. Omega naught C is equal to omega naught L implies omega naught square is equals to 1 by Lc. This is a resonance frequency or omega naught is equals to 1 by square root of Lc. Let us say this is equation number 2. So if this is the angular frequency, what is frequency formula? So we can write this as 2 pi f naught is equals to 1 by square root of Lc. It implies f naught is frequency is given by 1 by 2 pi root Lc. So if Lc values of the circuit inductance capacitance is given, so, the frequency is 1 by 2 pi root Lc. So, many hertz this is the frequency. Right. So, now, so at resonance, we know that Z impedance is minimum. Z is root of R square plus 0. Nothing but Z is minimum. And current is maximum. Right. If Z is minimum. So, what is the maximum current? I am writing this as Im maximum at a resonance. You can write it as 
Vm by R. Let us say this equation number 3. At resonance, both our uh, inductive reactions, capac capacitive reaction, reactants get cancelled. So, it purely acts like a resistor circuit. This is the maximum current at resonance condition. So, now, so for the values, so we have already drawn a graph of applied frequency versus current. And we shown that the current is maximum only at resonance. For the values, for the applied frequency, external force frequency omega, if it is other than the resonance frequency, omega or not. So, this value, the value of current Im is always less than Im maximum. When it will be maximum? So, this value we are calling it as Im maximum. So, for the applied frequencies, AC voltage frequencies, which are other than, these are not equals to the applied resonance frequency. These are not equal to the applied. For which the current value, so amplitude of the oscillating current is always less than the peak value. The peak value is observed only when the fre applied frequency matches with the natural force frequency. So, let us consider a um, applied frequency of omega for which let us say a value, let, for this value of omega. So, here the value of current, let us say the value of current, amplitude of the oscillating current, the amplitude of the oscillating current, I m is equals to I m max by root 2 for omega. For a one particular, we are choosing a one particular frequency omega, let us say, for one particular frequency omega, for this frequency, the amplitude of the oscillating current is how much? It is maximum by root 2. It is maximum by root 2. Do we have only one such frequency? No. It's a symmetric graph. So, we can have two such frequencies. Let us say this is omega uh, 1. Let us say omega 1 and omega 2 for convenience. We do. These are the two frequencies for which the amplitude of the current is 1 by root, root 2 times of I am maximum. We chosen that. We don't have one particular value. This is a, is a symmetric graph about the resonant frequency. So, this is a resonant frequency. So, we have two frequencies, omega 2, omega 1. Omega 2 is the left of natural frequency, omega naught. And omega 1 is right of uh, resonant frequency. So, for these frequency values, the amplitude of the oscillating current is how much? It is Im max by root 2. So, at these values of frequencies, the power dissipated, the power dissipated, the power dissipated is exactly half. Exactly half. Because power is Im square r. Right, I am square r by 2. We, we calculated this. I am square r by 2. So, if I am is equals to this much, I am max by root 2, the power will become exactly. So, if this is the value of power, so if substitute this value, the power exactly will become how much? So, this is initial. So, if you substitute this, final will become exactly how. So, these are called, the, these points, omega 1, omega 2 is called half power frequency points. So, for these frequencies, the current is I maximum by root 2. So, the power will become half of the initial value. So, this omega 1, omega 2, we call it as half power frequency points. So, the power dissipated is half. And omega 1 and omega 2 are called half power frequencies. And omega 1, omega 2 are exactly equidistant from the resonant frequency omega naught. So, let us consider omega 1 is equals to omega naught plus delta omega 
and omega 2 is equals to omega naught minus delta omega. One is lower by an amount of delta omega and one is higher by an amount of delta omega and uh, these are symmetrical about the resonant frequency. Right. So, these for these frequencies, the amplitude of the oscillating current is I maximum by root 2 for these values. I m is I max by root 2. Right. So, from this, what is omega 1 minus omega 2? Nothing but it will be 2 delta omega. It is called bandwidth of the circuit. It is called bandwidth of the circuit. So, if you consider these two values, omega 1 minus omega 2. So, this is called 2 delta omega. It is called bandwidth. And similarly, we have one more parameter called sharpness of resonance. Sharpness of resonance. It is defined as resonance frequency by bandwidth. It is defined as resonance frequency by bandwidth. If smaller is the delta omega, for small delta omega, if small delta omega, it means that sharpness of resonance is high or the peak is sharp or it is very narrow, the bandwidth is very small. If I, for a small delta omega, the peak will be sharp, right. So, now, uh, we said omega 1, omega 2, we consider for these frequencies, the current value is maximum by root 2. So, we are going to derive, derive expression for it. So, let us say, for omega 1, what is omega 1? Nothing but omega naught plus delta omega. For which, what is the value of current? Value of current is maximum. It is, how much value it is? I max by root 2. So, I m is equals to I max by root 2. Right. Now, what is the actual formula? I m is equals to V m by square root of. For omega 1, we are writing R square plus omega 1 L minus omega 1 C whole square. For the frequency of omega 1, we have written. And what is the value of this I m? I m is I m max by root 2. Right. So, I m max by root 2 is equals to V m by root of R square plus omega 1 L minus omega 1 C whole square. Right. So, here what is I m max from equation 3? It is V m by R from Equation 3. It is Vm by R root 2 is equals to Vm by square root of R square plus omega 1 L minus 1 by omega 1 C whole square. So, see here numerators are same. We can equate the denominators and we are squaring on both sides. So, this will become 2 R square is equal to square root get cancelled R square plus omega 1 L minus 1 by omega 1 c whole square. So, this is 2 r square, r square. So, this will become r square is equal to omega 1 l minus 1 by omega 1 c whole square. So, r is equals to omega 1 l minus 1 by omega 1 c. Right. So, here what is omega 1? Nothing but omega 1 is omega naught plus delta omega. So, R is equals to omega naught plus delta omega into L minus 1 by omega naught plus delta omega into C. Right. So, this equation we can write it as R is equals to, I am taking omega naught as common. So, 1 plus delta omega by omega naught into L minus 1 by, again here also omega naught is common, 1 plus delta omega by omega naught into C. See here, 
1 by omega naught c. We know that from resonance condition, omega naught into L is equals to 1 by omega naught c. Right. So, omega naught c can be written as omega naught L. Right. R is equals to omega naught 1 plus delta omega by omega naught into L minus 1 by omega naught c is nothing but omega naught L. 1 by omega, omega naught L into 1 plus delta omega by omega naught. This is the expression. Right. So, so this is simply mathematical equation just like a mathematical equation. So here R is equals to omega naught 1 plus delta omega by omega naught into L by L. Now this we are taking into numerator omega naught L into 1 plus delta omega by omega naught whole power of minus 1 whole power of minus 1. So by taking the expansion series as this is a delta omega is a smaller bandwidth this is very small compared to the resonance frequency as delta omega by omega naught is very lesser than 1 so we can neglect the higher order terms so this can be written as r is equals to omega naught 1 plus delta omega by omega naught into l minus omega naught l into so by neglecting the higher order terms we can write this as 1 minus delta omega by omega naught delta omega by omega naught square everything will be neglected because it is uh, delta omega by omega naught is very much less than 1 right So observe here, it is plus omega naught L and this is minus omega naught L get cancelled. So R is equals to, we will get it as 2 times of, this is minus into minus plus. So 2 times of delta omega by omega naught into omega naught into L. First term cancelled, omega naught L minus omega naught L cancelled. Omega naught into delta omega by omega naught into L minus into minus plus. So 2 delta omega by omega naught into omega naught into L. So this is get cancelled. Omega naught by omega naught cancelled. So R is equals to we got it as 2 delta omega into L. What is delta omega? 2 delta omega means it's nothing but bandwidth. So 2 delta omega is equals to R by L and we define shortness of resonance as omega naught by 2 delta omega. Shortness of resonance. Resonance is equals to omega naught by 2 delta omega. So omega naught by R by L or omega naught L by R. So quality factor Q is defined as omega naught into L by R. This is quality factor in terms of inductor L. Similarly, we can write Q as, Q can also be written as, we said omega naught L is nothing but 1 by omega naught C. So 1 by omega naught C into R. This is also the expression for quality factor. And observe here, the sharpness of resonance Q is written as omega naught by 2 delta omega or we can write it as bandwidth 2 delta omega is equals to omega naught by Q. It means bandwidth and quality factor they are inversely proportional to each other. Suppose if Q is large if so 2 delta omega is equals to omega naught by Q. If Q is large what, is mean, what it means if Q is large, sharpness of the circuit is large. So in that case, bandwidth is small. Bandwidth is small. So it is more selective circuit. So it has only resonance, very sharp resonance absorbed. Very sharp resonance absorbed. So as a Q, quality factor indicates the sharpness of resonance. So Q is, if 
Q is large, the band width is small, so it is uh, tuned to one particular frequency, single frequency. For rest of the frequencies, the current, current value is minimum, for, but for this value of frequency, the amplitude of the oscillating current is maximum. So it is called selective, more selective circuit. So if Q is large, in that case, bandwidth is small, or we can say that the narrower will be the graph or sharper will be the graph. It shows it has it is it is having resonance at one particular value. If it is uh, less than or more than the circuit is no more in resonance. So it is a, a, a good selective circuit having a tuning exact tuning of omega is equals to omega naught. So this is about suppose if uh, we said uh, as the resistance increases the peak will become broad right so if we have a circuit with im versus omega like this so observe here it is less sharp it means q is small and what about bandwidth bandwidth is nothing but the frequencies for which the current value is i m by root 2 maximum of i m by root 2 so here it has different frequencies for which the circuit is close to resonance so if we get very close it is not a sharp uh, the frequency for which the maximum value of current is not exactly one. If we have many values of frequencies for which the circuit is appear very close to the resonance. So here it is less selective circuit. It is less selective. So if the Q is small, if Q is small means less sharp. If the sharpness of the circuit of the peak is less, it means that less selectivity it has large frequency values for which the circuit is in resonance so see here not only uh, more or less for these all these values of frequencies the current value more or less the same it means that for more number of frequencies the current more or less similar so this type of circuits are called less selective circuit whereas here this is a very sharp peak because quality factor is large sharp the sharpness of resonance is large so it's a more selective circuit so this is about the sharpness of the resonance so in order to have a good tuning we have to prefer repeat having la a good sharpness sharpness of resonance if it is very sharp peak will get that particular signal uh, if the circuit is designed with a broad peak so for many values the current is more or less same but here the current is maximum only for this frequency whereas here the current values are maximum for uh, different frequencies so it's a less uh, selective circuit or uh, tuning is not at all a good one and also we can observe here the quality factor is large if the inductance value is large or the resistance as we said for a high resistance the peak will become broad for low resistance the peak will be sharp so if larger is the um, smaller is the resistance quality factor will be more if r is large quality factor is small so this is about sharpness of resonance so in tuning the circuits in designing the circuits we have to uh, design a circuit which is sharp but um, the current value is maximum only for one particular frequency we have to design the circuits in this way thank you